everyone. This video is on one of the reasons that newbie trainers and newbie owners fail when attempting to use food and toys to train their dog. Now, it's all about the concept of movement. When you're trying to get your dog to like being around someone or something, you don't move whatever it is into their space. The way to get your dog to like toys, to like treats, to like strangers, to like other dogs and water is to not bring, drag the dog to whatever it is or bring whatever it is towards the dog. Because what often happens is that this turns the dog off of finding whatever it is reinforcing. And this is oftentimes done with teaching a dog to play with toys. Now, he doesn't know what this is. It's left over from Christmas. It had some wrapping paper on it. But I've already worked with my dogs with toys and treats. But if I take this object and I try to get him to interact with it by pushing it into his face, that's not going to work. And if he had it, and instead of getting him to fetch it to me, I kept running after him, that's not going to teach him to want to play with me and the object. That's going to put him off wanting to bring the object to me if I keep running over. But if you move the object away from the dog, and you move away from the dog, that builds the dog's interest in whatever you have. Hey, giddy, you want that? Yeah, you do. Woohoo, you do. Oh boy. So now that he has it, if I come running over and I'm trying to interact with him, what I'm going to teach him is to run away from me. So instead, when he has the object, I'm going to move away from him and encourage him to move towards me with it. Woo! So I feel really bad about uh, pushing it in his face, but I wanted to show you exactly what it looks like and how you can really turn dogs off from toys and treats by moving them towards the dogs. We domesticated dogs, but they still have hunting instincts and they naturally want to move towards things that move away from them like that. However, a lot of times when people start using food and toys, they try to get the dog interested in the food by putting the food into the dog's face and just feeding them lots of treats like this. And what can happen is if the dog isn't that interested in the food, it can even lower their interest in the food. So the best way to build your dog's interest in food and toys is to initiate the training by the food or toy moving away from the dog to gain their interest in whatever you have. Good. Good. Ready, go get it. You want that, but we're working with treats. Ready, go get it. Woo, where did it go? Are you ready, go get it. Ready, go get it. Good job. Conversely, if your dog is too excited by food or toys, playing these type of games is going to make your dog even more excited. So you can actually use the other technique to your advantage. So if you wanted your dog to be not as excited by food or toys, you could calmly move the food towards the dog as the treat delivery, or calmly put the toy on the ground, and then the dog gets the toy without having to approach it. Here's an example of using a toy. You're moving the toy away from the dog to get them excited about following the toy. Get it? And then if you wanted your dog to be less excited by the toy, then the toy can move less. Are you ready? Drop. So I'm going to put the toy slowly down here like that. And then say, get it. Good boy. Drop. Get it. Awesome. Drop. Get it. Drop. Get it. Drop. Get it. Drop. Go around. Get it. Drop. Go circle. Get it. Oh, yeah. Drop. Twirl. Get it. Drop. Twirl. Get it. This is a microphone, and as you see, if I walk away from Halo with the microphone, he follows me. But 
if I move the microphone at him, he starts to have an aversion to it. So if I was trying to teach him to like something, like having his nails clipped, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> come here. And I started by just moving the object towards him, he might actually start to dislike the object even more because it's coming straight at him. So if you want a dog to like objects as well as people and other dogs, you don't want the object, the person or the dog, moving into their space as the first way to teach the dog to like being around these objects, people, or other dogs. Instead, it's better to teach the dog to like the object, person, or other dog by following the other person or dog and moving towards them and being reinforced for that movement towards the object or whatever it is. So, instead of pushing this microphone at Halo to get him to like it, so perhaps a trainer would show the object, click, and then feed a treat, Instead, you can move away with the object, halo free, and click the dog for following it. Good. Good job. <laughs> he said, don't feed me with the microphone hand. Good. Touch, good. Touch, good. Here you can see I'm working with Penny, a recently adopted dog, on building her confidence when guests come over. Instead of entering her house and trying to build a relationship by moving towards her, I am meeting outside on the street and reinforcing her for following me and building her motivation to want to move towards me. You can see that she doesn't look shy at all. In fact, she's pulling on leash and wagging her tail trying to get to me. When I go into Penny's house, I'm going in before her, not as any sort of dominance game, but because she's following my movement and is motivated to come towards me rather than her being inside her house and me as a guest coming into her space. Then, after Penny had time to settle on her mat, her owner could give her permission to come and sniff me and then recall her away and keep it a short and positive experience. Halo here had a negative experience where someone wanted him to sniff their hand and Halo got weirded out because suddenly this person just stuck their, the back of their hand in his face and he was like, whoa, I don't like that. So to teach him to like what humans do, where they do that in his face, I would have people hold their hand out from a distance and he could approach and touch their hand as a trick instead of the person coming into their space as the first part of the training plan. Good. Touch. Good. Ready? Go get it. Awesome. Good. Then when he was comfortable with approaching the hand like this, then I could start to work where I would do the gesture in front of him and move into his space, and you can see that he's not at all bothered by it like he was with the microphone. In fact, he, he wants to do a trick where he waves at me. Go get your treat, it's right there. Another great exercise is teaching the chin rest where the dog comes and puts their chin in your hand, like that. So first, the dog is approaching you and putting the chin in, in your hand, and then you can start to have the dog in front of you where you reach and put your hand under their chin. Good. A lot of people want their dogs to love water. They want to take their dog swimming. They want to give their dog baths. But the technique that most people use is moving the dog towards the water, like at the beach or at a lake or the bathtub, or moving the water toward the dog, like using a hose and spraying the dog with it. Now, there's some dogs that just love water, and after a little bit of time, they say, yay, this is fun. But for a lot of dogs, when they're moved towards water, or the water is moved towards them, they become extremely unhappy 
and start to have an aversion to the water, to taking baths, to playing in the water, or going near the ocean or a lake. So one way you can build your dog's interest in water is playing keep away games where you have a hose and you're moving the spray of the hose away from the dog. The dog can then experiment with biting at the water and getting near it and following it and getting a little bit wet as the water moves away. And then when the dog starts to really enjoy games like that, you can gradually spray the dog a, a tiny little millisecond and then move the water away and then spray the dog a little bit and then move the water away. So the dog is learning that when he gets a little bit sprayed, it then means he gets to play a chase with the water. Now you wanna take care, of course, that if you have a dog that's drinking the water while they bite at it, that you wanna make sure that your dog doesn't drink too much water if your dog is very excited about playing in water or playing with the hose. So you wanna be careful with that. Another thing is if you did play this game with the hose, you wanna make sure the dog is not going to bite at the tip of the hose unless you put something like a pool noodle over it so that he doesn't break one of his teeth if he were to bite the, um, the metal part of the hose. Some people comment on my videos saying, hey, why don't you use an untrained dog for once? Or that dog doesn't have that issue because he looked happy and friendly the whole video. And the reason is, is that the training is broken up into small achievable steps where the dog is successful, hopefully every step of the way, feeling confident and not conflicted and having a positive emotional response to the training. So the dog is going to look trained every step of the way unless you make a mistake. So if you raise criteria too quickly, the dog might have a little bit of a reg regression to his previous behavior, but it's not gonna look anything like it used to look in the past. So trainers like me, we don't want the dog to ever rehearse the behavior they did in the past because it's gonna make them more likely to do it in the future. So it's a little bit disappointing because the footage is just not as exciting as showing a stressed out, fearful dog or a dog that's guarding and reacting, but it's in the dog's best interest not to do this and in the best interest of their training plan. So I feel pretty bad that I did something that I don't do and I don't think is a good idea to do and it's just not fair on the dog, which was showing what not to do with the microphone with Halo where I was moving it into his space. In fact, the footage was so hard for me to watch because you could see how quickly I was turning something into an aversive thing that he found punishing and that's just not necessary in my training. This really brings up an extremely important point that things aren't intrinsically reinforcing or punishing to dogs. They can quickly turn from one to the other and one of the biggest ways that that can happen, as you saw, is the trainer's movement. A trainer can make an amazing training plan and it can look great on paper, but as soon as they're doing the training plan, something about their movement can cause the dog to have the opposite response to what they hoped the dog would have. And so it's extremely important as a trainer and if you wanna know more about your dog and how to train, to understand the dog's body language. So um, I actually have a video about reading your dog's body language in training sessions, and I'll link that in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for your training. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to channel KikoPup. You can also become a supporting member of this channel by clicking the join button. See you later, guys.